The wave equation in two dimensions is a lot like the wave equation in one dimension. We start with a thin flat surface or membrane, like a drum head, and when you use the finite difference method, things are much simpler if the domain is rectangular, so our drum is rectangular, the first of its kind. The surface is under constant tension T in units of newtons per meter, so that if you consider a small control volume as shown in the diagram, the forces acting on each side are calculated as T times the length of the side and are perpendicular to the side as shown in the smaller diagram. Looking at the larger diagram, it's as if the control volume is acted on by two thin strips, each behaving like a string under tension, with the tension being T times dx or dy. And we can expect the model for the 2D case to be similar to the 1D model. Recalling the 1D model, that is, the acceleration of the string at point x equals t divided by rho, the string density, times the second spatial derivative of u, we might guess that the 2D model would be the acceleration of the surface at point x comma y equals t divided by rho, the density of the surface material, times the second spatial derivative of u with respect to x plus the second spatial derivative of u with respect to y, and we would be right. The derivation of the 2D model is exactly like the derivation of the 1D model for the horizontal and vertical directions, the two thin strips in the diagram, done independently and added. Consider the x direction and imagine looking at the surface head on so that the thin sheet appears as a horizontal line and consider the forces acting on sides A and B of the control volume. Why, it's the same diagram we used in the 1D derivation, except that now the tension is T times dy instead of just T. And exactly the same analysis applies. The value of the vertical force on side B is T times dy times the spatial derivative of U with respect to X evaluated at the midpoint of side B, that is at X plus dx over 2 comma Y and the force on side A is negative t times dy times the spatial derivative of u with respect to x evaluated at x minus dx over 2 comma y. A similar analysis applies to sides C and D. So, the vertical force on the control volume is given by the top line. From Newton's second law of motion, the vertical acceleration of the control volume equals the sum of the forces acting on the control volume divided by the mass of the control volume, which is rho times dx times dy, and we have the second line. Taking the limit as dx and dy goes to zero gives us line three, the two-dimensional wave equation. As always, we make the FDM substitution in the model and solve for u at time t n plus 1. Intuition. Expressions of the form the second partial derivative of a function f with respect to x plus the second partial derivative of the function with respect to y are ubiquitous in the analysis of physical systems and have been given the name Laplacians after Pierre-Simon Laplace, a very famous French mathematician and physicist in the 18th and 19th centuries. The FDM substitution for the Laplacian can be rewritten as shown, as the difference between the value of the function u at location ij and the average of the function values at four neighboring points as shown in the diagram. Recalling that a single spatial second derivative represents curvature, if both derivatives in the Laplacian are negative, the surface is concave downward. If both are positive, the surface is concave upward. And if both are zero, the surface is flat. Not necessarily horizontal, but flat. And if one is positive and the other negative, the surface is saddle-shaped.
the fine points. <clears throat> we have the computational equation which translates directly to MATLAB as shown. As before, we need initial values for u at t1 and t2. Boundary conditions. Our first example will have Dirichlet boundary conditions all around, and the second will have Neumann boundary conditions all around. In the first example, we'll initialize the surface at times t1 and t2 to have an initial pulse right in the center of the sheet. In the second, we'll generate a pulse as we did in the one-dimensional case, but at an interior point, not on the boundary. So let's look at our first example. The assignment is as usual to reproduce the results in the bid and also to run the program with Neumann boundary conditions all around and introduce a sine wave at location 2 comma 2. The program outline for both problems follows. Thank you. 